Let's squeeze up something from the buzzwack, you know. Yeah, Anthony Johnson does feature something in here, you know. Where are they again? We're at 13 minutes after the five. Yeah, um, this is meant to be the Jam Master show until seven, but you know. But we'll we see what I want. We're just waiting for the arrival of the Jam Master family. It's our, you know, Jam Jammers himself. It could be Dougie or Supreme. Yeah, up in the building. Or Buzzy B or one of them, man. You know what I mean? Or all of them. You know what I mean? Soon, all right then. Bless, 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 radio. bless, 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 Greetings UK fam, this is TC Carrier. Find your voice in association with Newman House presents Redefined Relationship. There are so much judgmental people that we can't go to them and tell them our problems. How to find a good black man and a good black woman and the magic of sex. The whole thing is a mess. Date, Saturday the 10th of March 2018. We need change. Special guest from TC Author of The Secret Science of Black Male and Female Sex. Venue, Chestnut Community Centre. Which phone? 280 St. Anne's Road, London, N15, 5pm. Time, 2pm to 8pm. Most of the African market. For more information, contact Brother Dougie on 0788-240-3871. Tickets, only £5. You can also get tickets from Body Music. Letting you know I'm coming back to London. Date, Saturday, the 10th of March, 2018. This event, Dr. B. Pieces. You're in tune, in tune to DJ Jammers, Jammers, Jammers on Bless Radio, UK's number one station for great music. Don't touch that dial. Yeah, greetings family, like to say big blessings to each and everyone listening in or here on Bless. You're tuned to the Jam Master Show and uh, we've got, uh, today we're going to be talking about words, sound and power. Um, I've got a book out called Etymology, uh, The Root of Words and I'm going to start by week discussing various aspects of language. So if you want to contribute, um, if you've got any information that we might need to share, you can call us on zero seven nine treble four three one three double six. Once again, zero seven nine treble four three one three double six. Right. Um, so I'm going to play one more track, and then after that track, we're going to go into the topics. Once again, I'd like to say a special request to each and every one listening. Everybody's been working hard, trying to build up their family. Everybody's trying to do business. Everybody's just trying to run the home. I'd like to big up each and everybody who's tuning in here. And hopefully we're going to have a great show today. Thank you. Right, today we're going to talk about etymology, words, sound and power. The goal for this show is to present you with a clearer picture, clearer perspective of etymology and its comedic roots. We also want to give you uh, your not different choices in your uses as interpretation of words because words relate to your consciousness the words that you use relate to your consciousness so the more words you use the more different aspects you can have of consciousness in a, I think it's in Iceland where they have about 20 words to describe snow so that means they've got 20 levels of understanding snow so the more words you use the different perspectives you can have um, also we want to give you strategies to decode and use the language more effectively so you don't end up in an argument and a fight and a war so you, you can have a clearer perspective of how you can conduct yourself in life once again the goals for this show is to present you with a clearer perspective of etymology and its comedic roots also to give you alternative choices in your uses and interpretation of words and also to give you strategies to decode and use the language more effectively 
Right, once I'm just going to give you a warning because once you listen to this and you hear certain words and your consciousness opens, it's almost impossible for you to go back. Right, once again, today's show, we're going to be talking about words, we're going to be talking about the dictionary, we're going to talk about language, we're going to be talking about writing going to be talking about phonetics and we're going to be week by week we're going to be discussing a letter of the alphabet the alphabet letter we're going to be discussing today is the letter a okay once again if you've got any contributions to make if you disagree or agree the number to call is zero seven nine triple four three one three double six bless radio giving you a high level of knowledge right first we're going to talk about what is etymology if you've never heard the word before etymology is the study it's the study of letters a study is the study of the origin of words and the way in which their meanings have changed throughout history that's the oxford dictionary definition <coughs> sorry of etymology um if you've got any st- uh, your school children if you want to write down any children you want to write it down research for yourself the word etymology because don't take what I say as gospel um, the word etymology is spelt E-T-Y M-O-L-O-G-Y Once again, etymology is spelled E-T-Y-M-O-L-O-G-Y And the Oxford Dictionary, to quote, says Etymology is the study of the origin of words And the way in which their meanings have changed throughout history That's the Oxford Dictionary definition The origin of the word uh, comes via the Greek word etymologia with etymologia, which is E T U M O L O G I A. Once again, the origin of the word etymology comes from Latin via the Greek word etymologia, which is E T U M O L O G I A. So it comes from a Greek word, the Greek word, and the Greek word etymologos. Right, let me break something down for you now. Anytime you see the word L O G Y, Logos, it means word or student, right? Logos means word, Logi, L O G Y means student. The first four letters of the word etymology, E T Y M, etymol, etymol comes from etumon or etumos yeah so etymology there's two sounds that make up the word you've got the word logi which means word or student or you've got the word etymon or etymolos which means true so the dictionary is giving you a meaning a meaning means the average in mathematics it doesn't mean the actual root word it's just giving you a rough word so the root word of etymology has a Greek origin called etymos and it means true word. So basically the dictionary is giving you a lie because the dictionary says it's the origin of the word, which is a lie. The Oxford Dictionary is telling you a lie when it comes to the word etymology because it's telling you that it means the origin of words. But the real definition, the true meaning of etymology, so even the word etymology is a lie, it's a fabrication. The true meaning of the word etymology means the true word it means the true word it comes from greek etymology it means the true word so the first question i want to ask you is why if you originate a language would you need a word to say true word because wouldn't it be the true word already you wouldn't need to if it's your car you don't need to ask where the cars come from because you know it's your car so if you've got a language and you've and you've got a word in your language that says true and it comes from before you've you've been in existence that means that what you're talking about is a fabrication so basically the study of etymology gives you the true meaning of the word and what the dictionary is hiding from you and what latin is hiding from you is that the true word comes before Latin 
it comes before Greek, it relates to ancient Kemet. So true the true meaning of words all come from where like the word that language has started from, which is ancient Kemet. So the whole of the language system is designed to disguise the fact of where the original true words have come from. Right, we're going to go into the words of grammar. Right now we're going to talk about words. Okay. Well, actually, we've got a, a caller coming through, so I'm going to get the caller and then we'll be back once again. So we're just going to get this call and then we'll be back once again. Uh, we're going to talk, just break down a bit of etymology once again. So I'm going to break down etymology and then we're going to start the discussion right here. Okay. So once again, etymology uh, in the English dictionary tells you that we're talking about etymology. Well, I'm just going to, the, the first, say, first 20 minutes, going to be talking about etymology. Then we're going to be joined by our guests. We're talking about etymology and its comedic roots. Um, Basically, now we're going to just so basically, what is etymology? We briefly touched on etymology. The dictionary says it means the origin of words, but when you go to the Greek definition of etymology, it says the true word. Well, why would you need a word, uh, a word to say true word in your in your language, which means the earlier meaning that the words come from some an earlier source? So basically, etymology says true words, and it it shows that the language has come before Greek and before English etymology is the discussion of words basically now we're going to talk about grammar so just find any notes and we're going to talk about grammar once again etymology is the true meaning of words and for the first part of this we're going to be talk about grammar <clears throat> what is grammar and then we're going to talk about the letter A and then we're going to get into the, the the main discussion for the day once again the number to call is 079 right right people ready for this one right grammar firstly grammar the origin comes from the word the Greek word grammar which is the same spelling as the English word grammar without the R. So the Greek word grammar is G-R-A-M-M-A. -A. So this is where the, the English word grammar comes from. In Greek, the word grammar means the letter of the alphabet or a thing written. So when, you know, we go to school or your children go to school, you learn comprehension, which is not grammar. Make it clear. Comprehension is not grammar. Comprehend means to understand something that you've been given to, to a task or, or a job that you've been given to do and to stand under that task. So basically, the elite go to grammar school to learn grammar grammar um, the average person goes to comprehensive school to stand under somebody who knows grammar so basically our children our young ones are denied the knowledge of grammar and this is where they're at a disadvantage when they go to school or their intellectual studies or the grasp of words or their, their educational so-called educational level is tarnished due to the the grammar the, the lack of grammar that we are not we've been denied the opportunity to um, uh, understand or, or to participate in you see only certain people are allowed to go to grammar school once again grammar the English word grammar is G R M A R it comes from the Greek word grammar which is G R A double M A one less letter so once again the english word grammar comes from the greek word grammar and grammar means the letter of the alphabet or thing written right grammar means the letter of the alphabet or thing written it's entirely different meaning from comprehension comprehension means to stand under something it's not grammar and grammar also comes from the greek word grammar tech 
grammar tech. So grammar comes from the Greek word grammar tech. Grammar tech is spelled G R A double M A T I K E. Once again, grammar tech. The Greek word grammar tech is G R A double M A T I K E. If you want to get a piece of paper or a notebook or put on a tape recording, uh, I'm going to give you that moment to do so also you can hear a recording of this on the speakers club channel on youtube so if you want to um, refer back to this um, you can go on our youtube channel the speakers club channel once again we're talking about words grammar etymology and uh, discussion we've got also got brother shem in the house yes shem like to how you doing shem no. Yes. Uh, yes, he's I coming. Do, yes, we can hear the voice, word, sound, and power of Shen. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. So, so yes. Yeah, so, I'm just gonna be just gonna go do a little bit into the grammar. Then yeah, you yeah. can come in. And, so gonna, okay. Oh, you want to come? Yeah, come in. Yeah, I'm just gonna drop something, man. Yeah, go. Um, even like um, on the level of looking at the word grammar and how that is also linked to the word glamour. Okay. How how do you how do you how, link, it, how do you link it how do you link it to well um, when we look at the word. Um, Grammar, and then you have gram, grammar, um, via Latin, as you said, grammatica, um, which meaning art, also means art of letters mm-hmm. from grammar or grammat letter. And then when you look at the study, the etymology of the word glamour or glamour, which comes from the 18th century, originally Scots, in the sense of enchantment and magic. How are you spelling glamour? Glamour, G L uh, G L A M O U R. Glamour, as something that's glamorous. Right. Okay. And that comes right. from where? It, it, that comes from the 18th century. Uh, originally Scots, in the sense enchantment or magic. Alter, al- alteration of grammar. So, glamour is also an alteration of grammar. And that comes from the Scottish. Yeah, the Scots basically. Although grammar <coughs> itself was not used in this in this sense, the Latin word grammatica from which it derives was often used in the Middle Ages to mean scholarship, learning, including the occult practices. Right, and I just want to take it up from there once again. Grammar come from the Greek grammar means letter of the alphabet or thing written from the Greek grammatic. Grammatica. Um, grammatica. Uh, from the Greek word grammatike. From, from uh, the Greek word grammatike. grammatike. Then G-R-A-M-M-A-T-I-K-E. Right, once, right, so grammatike is grammar. G-R-A-M-M-A. Grammar plus T-K. T-I-T-K-E-K. So grammatike, which is the art mm. of letters. So art is an important element of the word. That's grammar. Right. Art. Remember that. So grammar is the art. Comes from grat- grammatica, which is the art of letters via Latin, and from the old French word grammari, which is G R A M A I R E. Right, and it, and that's where the English word grammar has has developed from. So once again, grammar. G R A double M A. The letter of the alphabet or thing written comes from the Greek grammatike, which is the art of letters, which from via French and Old German grammari leads to the late English word grammar. Right. Right. The word grammar tech, tech, as in technique, is etymologically derived from the Greek word tech, which actually means to listen. Yeah, so tech means listen, as in the word disco tech. When you're listening to the disco, it's also a skill. So when you listen, you acquire a skill, as it, as it, we said in the word technique, and it's also translated into a craft or an art. Again, so once again, grammatique is an art or a craft. Well, that basically means that when you're studying letters and you're using grammar. It's not facts, figures, or evidence. It's an art form. It's a form of art. And what's art? Art is something that is done to stimulate your senses. So basically, the words have been created to stimulate your senses, to make you perform an action. The word, as you rightly said about Scotland, glamour, 
actually means what was it again what you said uh, grammar developed from glamour um so So, yes, yeah, so uh, in regarding to the word glamour, um, which comes from the 18th century, uh, meaning enchantment or magic, alteration of grammar. So the word glamour and, gram- and grammar ha- were used alter- uh, alternatively, basically. And also, in, in, in accordance with that, the word grammar, you've also got the word grimore. Grimore. Grim- yes, or grimore. Yeah, grimora. Is it? Yeah, Grimore, Grimore, Grimore yeah. Which, which which is the French word. What what comes from the word grammar, which, which is it means a book of magic, magic spells or right. invocations. So that's basically, right. magic has also come from the that's the right. word grammar via the French grammore, which means a book of magic and spells. Yes. So so basically, uh, there was a book of magic uh, relating to grammar. Uh, called Le Grand and Grammore or the, the the Red Dragon, the Art of Commanding Spirits. So basically, all this is held in the Vatican. One of the biggest books on spells called the the Grand Grammore or Wood Red Dragon Rouge, Dragon Rouge, which is the Red Dragon, the the Art of Commanding Spirits. This is held in the Vatican, That's basically. Right. And you can see if you look at. Um, Go look at the the popes, uh, various images of the popes. You'll see this dragon or the drag to the dragon symbol. So it's it's symbolic with the papacy, uh, papacy or the popes. You'll see the dragon. So basically, grammar is basically the art of commanding you to do things by stimulating your senses, uh, your senses, and and it's used specifically, especially in drama, in films, in plays, in your education. Grammar is not facts and it's not facts and evidence grammar is the skill of making you do something in accordance to what the pro grammar wants you to do because when you put something forward it's pro like protest produce uh, you, you know so so basically when you put forward a gram you become the pro grammar and you are able to influence someone to do something it's also called a management or manager because a manager basically gets you to perform an action and, and is in control of you as the actor of the action uh, would you like to are you going to participate oh right yeah, yeah, um, yeah, I was, I was um, going to add obviously we spoke about art and art is a form of creativity right so um, in the word heart you get the word art as well yeah that's so right so through your heart expression you create art that's right. Yeah, it's designed to. Uh, uh, yeah, it's designed. If you look in the word heart, as you're saying, it's designed to to stimulate your heart. You know, you're giving you emotions so and making you become emotional. So basically, all grammar has been designed to put you as it's as it is relating to calling it down a spirit and spirit is not a word to be frightened of spirit i mean sorry it, it's, it's a spirit is 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 an act in which you like a spell a spell as in the word spelling is a period of time or or is is to make you is to make you hold a certain action for a spirit period of time so for instance the grammatical word of the word shy so when you hear that word you've been given impressions of what it's like to be you've been trained how to be shy so when you hear this word shy through the grammar you take on this 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 spell of the word shy and because the word has been put in a in a noun factor it's been it's been, once you've been put had a label put on you then then you become that label for instance you know, as i said before the word alcoholic once you call yourself an alcoholic then you're stuck in the spell of the alcoholic which alcohol where where because al- a noun is an entrapment so when you put a noun on yourself then that means you're entrapped in the noun so basically if you drink too much you can drink less that's the simple way a verb is an action but once you take on the spell of the noun and you call yourself an alcoholic then you're stuck in this alcoholic label you know so what's one thing you have to remember that when you've been given a label it's a it's a spell it's an in form of entrapment where you have the ability to cry and laugh in a second so basically you are beyond spells or labels because you have the 
ability to make any action manifest itself within you by just your thought process you can make anything happen but what happened through the practice of grammar you're tricked into taking on a label or a word and once you attach yourself to this label then you're encased in a label right that's basically so basically we touched about on grammar on etymology which means true words um the question is asked what is a true word well a true word is a word that is not english or greek because a true word is the origin of the word which comes from ancient kemet and then we've touched a uh, basis on grammar which we've broken down that grammar is not actually facts or figures it's a method of making it's a, uh, it's a method of entrapment to make you do what you're told to do basically in the words of grammar you've been given a word a word is basically an order uh, hidden in the sound is the order. So basically, as a word, is is an order. If you look at the if you look at the, the word word, and you put an S in front of it, you see the word sword. And what happened was they realised the pen was mightier than the sword, so they was able to use words to entrap you using the skill of grammar. All right now we're gonna. Um, it's just as a basic. That's just a basic. Um, uh, so we're, week by week we're going to be talking about etymology, grammar, words Right Today we're going to um, start with the letter A And then we're going to go into discussion So we're going to talk about the letter A And the letter A uh, The original symbol for the letter A The Kemetic symbol I don't like to say Egyptian because it, that's a trick word Egyptian is a trick word Because it, 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 it stops you from saying Africa basically so it's trying to cut off the source of the etymological root of words every word comes from ancient Kemet Africa not really such thing as Egypt really because everything's Africa so the ancient word in Africa uh, even if you look at the word Egypt you see uh, Egypt Patar which is Patar basically is the creation of the symbol of creation which is an African symbol so even in the word Egypt Patar you have the African word Patar basically anyway the first letter of the so-called alphabet but it's really an afrobit because it comes from africa is the letter a which is the symbol of the vulture the symbol of the vulture is the first letter of the alphabet the alpha the letter of the vulture signifies the vulture has the ability to um consume death and produce life so it's seen as in the word air as as a cycle it seems it seems that the creative aspects of your of elements so basically every time you breathe and breathe in and breathe out you're creating a cycle of of life so that's the aspect of the letter a it's not just a letter it's an aspect of in bringing in a, a spirit a, a higher level of consciousness into you into yourself so you have the spirit of creative creativity just by the way you breathe you know breathing is just it's not just a mechanical process it, sh- it shows your link to the higher creative force by the your ability to create life just by the, by the way you can make air come in and out the vulture also be- became associated with re- rebirth um vultures were believed to be seen as the creatures that kept the balance between life and death in order so basically the the vulture symbolizes a which symbolizes breath so when you breathe you're keeping the balance of life and death in order so that's the power you have by breathing is that you are balancing you're you're practicing the hat just by the way that you breathe because you're balancing life and death you're gonna Oh, I thought you were going to come in. Okay. Yeah, I was just going to say also, um, one of the symbols of Ma'at is also the vulture as well. Mm-hmm. So, in regarding to. Um, is it the feather? Is it the feather? No, it's. The, vul- the feather of the vulture? It's, it, it's the headdress as well. The headdress of Ma'at, okay, which is. No, Malet. of Oset. Oset. Oset, okay. which Oset. is the modern principle. The modern, yeah. And also, we look at the vultures, they, they when you study their survival skills when it comes to children their own ch- children if they are uh, if they if they see that if the mother sees their child um, out of food she will dig into her own flesh and give her own flesh to her children really that's what the vulture yeah. does wow yeah it symbolizes the mother because um, the, vu- the vulture is that the Egyptian vulture actually is very clean 
uh, even though you see eating carcasses, uh, the Egyptian vulture is a very clean animal. Its feathers are disinfected by the UV light of the sun during flight, and its stomach acid kills off any bacteria that it might have ingested. That's right. Yeah, and they, 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 I think that they believe that all the vultures were female. That's right. You know, and uh, yeah, so they believe that the vultures were female. And uh, and basically, what were mothers, and it became yeah. the mother simple. The vulture. This is a key element for Christians listening in. In ancient Kemet, the vulture was seen as Parthenogenesis. Yeah. Parthenogenesis. Basically, the, above, the vulture was seen as the mother figure. That's right. It was seen as it creating life. Yeah. By itself, the virgin birth. So this was the first virgin birth. Was the concept was 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 I like to say fornicated by the, yeah. the uh, ancient Kemet the ancient virgin Kemet. birth was the, the vulture is the symbol of that's the right virgin because birth. In, in regards to when Osset um, um, uh, who is Osset for listeners who are not familiar with ancient um, Kemetic basically Osset is the universal mother the universal mother principle basically mm-hmm. um, she is the sister wife of Osiris or mm-hmm. Osar basically so in regards to her transforming herself into a vulture when she then finds um, the pieces of a saw and puts the body back together again oh she transfers herself into a vulture, into a vulture. Yeah. and remember that the vulture picks up dead car- picks up the carcasses so that's right. a symbol of her going throughout Egypt finding the 14 pieces of a saw that was chopped up by mm-hmm. Seth so this is important for Mother's Day. Just remember, you know, the the original principle uh, of the first letter of the alphabet relates to the mother principle, uh, the balance of life, life and death, and that's what the mother does. The, the mother is the, is is the nurturer of life, you know, the vessel well of of life. That's why you get the, in the word ma, the a symbol represents the balance of life and death. That's right. Yeah, and if we we won't go into M really at the moment, but just briefly, the, the letter M also relates to uh, the maternal aspect. It relates to water. It relates to the owl. It relates to the unseen. So the M relates to the unseen, the unseen, and it also relates to water. You know, so if you've got the word mother, you've got the maternal, the paternal water. You know, so once again, uh, etymology, the true meaning of the word, it relates to ancient Kemet. Grammar is how words are used to make you do what the programmer wants you to do we started with the letter a the letter a relates to the vulture it relates to how you breathe it relates to you you have the power of the balance of life just by breathing as well like if you most sports or or any action you want to do is basically it, you have to breathe in a certain way to manifest your higher potential so every time you breathe one thing you can do is is be more conscious of your breathing and the more conscious you are of your breathing is the more calmer you will be and you'll be able to perform activities at a higher level just by being aware of how you breathe the breathing also relates to your spirit it relates to the it's, it's also the symbol of the ox so the a relates to how you breathe it relates to life, life it's a symbol of the ox um basically how you breathe you can make yourself more alert more intelligent or more easygoing just by how you breathe so basically the symbol of if you turn the a upside down you'll see your ox's head so basically the the, the comedic symbol of the vulture which is rebirth and balance and creation so basically you've got the power to create and it is that that's the initial part the a relates to air relates to being alert relates to being aware you know so your first point of even in meditation meditation or being on a higher level is the control of your breathing so the control of your breathing is your link to your higher levels the first link to your higher level okay well that's the first aspect of the letter a we'll be going into more about the letter a um in and other letters of the alphabet in previous weeks. Well, basically, as well, what I'd just like to just briefly add as well is also the A relates to when you go into Hebrew and, and the Phoenicians, the A relates to the bull. It relates to the Aleph, which is the bull spirit. So the, the spirit of creation that was in ancient Kemet is now moved into a, 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 the spirit that can be controlled. So basically, through grammar, 
they've realised that you can control a person's spirit by looking at the spirit as a ball. The ball spirit is one that is intense, it's repetitive and it resists. So grammar has been constructed to control the spirit of the bull. That's why you'll see that the grammar has been designed with spirit in mind. It's repetitive. When you learn, learn a letter, or especially in spelling, it's repetitive. It's called tautology. Tautology is when you do the same thing over and over again. It's not acquiring wisdom. It's it's making it's a habit forming instruction. So basically, you repeat the letter over and over again, and and repetitively. So that will that will make an, a, a break down your resistance of thinking for yourself, and increase you to to perform something that is written. Written means something, a writ. A writ is something that you have to perform, otherwise you're going to be punished. N means in, so writ N. N means in writ. So written means something that you have to perform, otherwise you're going to be punished. So basically they've taken the spirit of the bull and applied grammar to control your habit creation by giving you constant process that you have to learn over and over again. And uh, basically... If you do not do what you've told, especially the young ones, they're called naughty boys, right? So basically, if you don't perform the actions that you've been given via the grammar and learn, you, you're classed as a naughty boy. What is a naughty boy? A boy in 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 nautical language or in the Admiral language is something that is held at what it sees. Yeah. So when you be called a boy, you're called you you have to, it's, it's classing you that you've got to hold what you see. That's what the word boy means. It's, it's, it's a nautical language that means to be held at what you see. Basically, so if you don't do what you're told or you don't do what you're seen to do, then you're called naughty. What's naughty mean? Naughty comes from the word nautical. So nautical is, is when nautical comes from the word nautical. So basically, it, it relates to navigation. It relates to navigation. So, nau so nautical relates to navigation. So basically what happens is they want you to be a boy. This is the male, talking about the male spirit, the bull. So the way they use grammar to control the young males is they want the young males to be boys. That's why they're called boys because they want them to hold what they see not to question what they see but to be held what they see so basically if you if you are if you hold what you see as a as a young boy then you're called a good boy good means property it's a single word for goods so you're a good boy means you're, you're good pro that means you hold at what you see you perform an instruction without deviation so that's what a boy really means it means to perform what you see which is what a boy does in in the sea without deviation it's held by what you see a boy is held by what you see nautical naughty means that you you navigate your own way in the sea so basically they don't want you to question be critical or navigate your way be nautical so they they want they want you to be a boy which means to be held by what you see so this is one of the tricks of grammar it wants you to be held in what you see Yes, and as Theo can see some water that he liked to participate in. <laughs> so it's good to be nautical, actually, because nautical means to navigate. So when they call you a nautical boy, it's actually to be, you, you, you have the ability to navigate at what you see. So we have to start to understand the tricks behind these words. Also, remember, the spirit of the bull, they want to control your bull-like spirit. So basically, especially in slavery, what did they do? They broke your spirit through they broke the spirit of resistance they res they broke your language by talking repetitively you know so so this is this is what they do. they broke your spirit and you look what happens if you're a naughty boy if you have a spirit as a child and you don't go by what you've been told to do what happens to you you get zero in in your test you'll get a zero and what will happen after that you get your zero if you get zero marks because you're doing your own thing you'll also get a cross if you put a cross and a zero together you see the word ox so basically time anytime you display any spirit but by being nautical you'll get a zero and you'll get an ox mark next to you the mark of the bull the mark of having a spirit right that's the first part of the session so 
We're going to be going into the topic of discussion after this break. Once again, I'd like to welcome everybody who's just tuned in to Bless. Uh, we're right here at the Jam Master Show. And um, we've earlier been discussing language, etymology. We're going to move on to the next topic. If you just missed us, basically, we were talking about etymology meaning the true word, uh, showing you that everything comes from ancient Kemet. Then we touched on grammar, which grammar we talked to was the art of letters. It also relates to calling of spirits. Then we talked about the letter A, the first aspect, the principle, the Kemetic principle of the letter A, which relates to the vulture basically you have the power to control your emotions first the first part of control is by your breathing by air because air controls fire so when you're fired up you can slow down your breathing to control your fire you know also the breathing also that can heat you up as well so basically by the power of your breathing you can control your emotion or your emotion you have the balance of life and death just by your breathing it's a direct link to the mother spirit also it's your link to your creator because if you do not breathe you will die but if you breathe you create life just like the vulture so it signifies this symbolic symbol of your breathing pattern then we also relate to the a principle also your spirit because you know somebody's fired up they have a strong spirit it's related to the breath so the breath of the vulture also relates to the spirit of the ox so we showed as well how you can start to develop your spirit and just by your breath and how the education symbol the education is designed or the grammar is designed to break your spirit basically to make you perform a rip to make you form an action if you do not perform the action you'll be punished so basically we showed how the grammar relates to related to, to being a naughty boy the boy relates to being held at what they see nautical means to navigate when you ask questions it's a journey so to stop the quest they call you a pupil pupil means when you see things through one eye yet held at what you see because pupil backwards means lift up thank you that was the first session of language week by week we'll be going next week to be letter b and more now we're going to go on to the topic of the day we got in the house, Theo. How you be feeling, Theo? Um, not too bad, Jamas. Good evening to all the blessed listeners. You caught me with something in my mouth here. Um, <laughs> give me a moment. Okay, that sounds a little bit better. Yeah, good to be here. So, um, yeah, once again, good evening to all the blessed listeners. I'm um, ready to move on to the next um, subject. Yeah, and uh, who's going to tell the subject matter? Is it Shen or who's going to lead the... Is Shen, you're going to lead the subject for today? Well, we, all, we are all going to take turns in leading this... Um, but in, in regards to um, the nature of the subject, um, stemming from last conversation we had in regarding to psychology, right? Mm-hmm. And how psychology plays um, the foundation of, of a lot of things in life, basically. Um, a lot of aspects and a lot of systems are rooted in in psychology basically yeah so um, stemming from that we are going to talk about the systems institutions that um, control um, our daily activities we spoke about the nine um, systems of power the last time we're going to go uh, so you're saying there's nine systems that control our daily activity? Yes. Yeah? Okay. Are you going to name them or is that for later on in this um, talk? Yeah. The, um, well, just in, in, in um, you know, if we just um, give you a brief <clears throat> um, naming of these nine systems, we have economics, um, you know, these can be in any order, but I think that they do follow a sp- specific order um, and um, protocol, uh, obviously with economics, which is um, the natural distrib- was it the, the, the distribution of the natural resources of the land. So econ- economics is the first principle. Yeah, be- uh, because with economics, with land, with, with earth... That's how you can control with the resources. That's how you can control the world, basically. So etymology. So sorry, I'm still stuck on etymology. So economics is the first principle of control. Yeah. So economics is the first institution that c- controls our mm-hmm. daily activities. But we're not just talking about money here, because a lot of people think that economics is money. Mm-hmm. Money is an invention. <laughs> it's an illusion. Um, we're talking about. Um, you know the natural resources of the land, basically. I just want to relate back to what we talked about. I was talking about earlier, etymology because etymology relates to the letters. Right. Letter in 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 Latin is literacy. Literacy. Right. 
Literacy in Latin is litera. Litera. Lit means to quarrel. That's right. Uh, uh, as in litigation. That's right. Terra means terrain. Terrain. So every the whole language. As well as is is designed to stimulate your senses, but it's all designed to crawl over land, power, right. wealth, and identity. This is what language exactly. is designed to do. So exactly. it relates to etymology. Exactly. It relates to economics. Exactly. So if you don't have the economics, you have no litigation. <laughs> you can't litigate. You can't argue over anything really. Mm-hmm. And th- this this is why when we are looking at our situation as as uh, melanated or um, um, black people who um, don't have control of our own land. You can't, argue, you can't argue properly if you don't have no property. That's right. That's right. So if you have no property, if you have no land, which is basically, um, there's a term that land is the only thing that um, does not depreciate. Right. <laughs> actually so if you can control that you be able to rule your own life basically and the only reason why you need to control land if you're not the originator of the land if you wasn't there in the first place because land means that you've landed from somewhere else that's, right. that's why they call it land because they've landed from somewhere else and they feel the need to control, control it. it exactly so the next one is education um so looking at education from a general perspective in a sense of of, um, of um, passing on or um, providing knowledge um, to uh, people um, information wisdom um, traditions that are passed down from culture to culture from from um, generation to generation um, that is very important as well um, to to be able to pass on that pass on that information and knowledge to the next generation. So education in the general level is also used as a way to control people too. So once you've landed from somewhere else, then you need to educate. Duke means educate means the Duke's money. That's so right. you need to create make the people your wealth your wealth exactly yes sir. so so then you use you, you land from somewhere else and then you educate that educate means they become your money they become your talent because talented right. as well means money in in roman right and most uh of the education system is based upon um educational duping those who need to be controlled for the purpose of uh, sustaining and protecting the um, dominating powers, basically. Mm-hmm. That's why I was just, just talking about before. You know, you're giving lessons to lessen you. That's you know, right. You have to put things in writing because writ means it's a prof- punishment if you don't perform the action that you have to understand. You have to stand under what you've been told to do through the process of tautology. That's right. And obviously, in their education s- system. If you don't abide by their um, by their uh, principles of of um, information, therefore, you, and you don't be, and you're not seen as attaining or learning that information, you're seen as a moron. That's it. You're seen as a moron. So, which which really and truly, you know, the less on is the less on. And the more on is the more on, but also it relates to the mores as well. So that's right, and uh, and, and and as well, uh, you have to follow what the ruler says. And if you look at a ruler, a ruler creates the line. A line means you move, you move in alignment. That's why they give you information, so you move in the formation that the ruler has set for you that's in right. their alignment. That's right. Then you have entertainment. Okay, which is an, which one minute. Is so it's <laughs> it's the first one again is is is, is economics. Economics. Then you have education. Education. And then, then you have entertainment. That sounds a bit entertainment. How does that work? Well, how does in, entertainment control. Well, uh, obviously, um, in order for them to educate you or to dupe you in a certain um, mind state, they have to enter and attain your mind. So, entertain meant enter and attain your mind. So through process of, of education, what they're actually doing is entering your mind, entering and attaining your mind state. Through visualization, through, let's say, the, um, through the movies or the programmings, mm-hmm. the arts, 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they're all used uh, through the music or the muses, you know, the spells. <laughs> so, you know, they um, also through edutainment, they will educate through an entertainment. So they will mix the left brain and the right brain together in order for them to control your pineal gland, basically. And that's also what they do with alphabet. I forgot to say alphabet. Alpha, once again, is the bull. It's the, the bull was used to work, you know. And, 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 and the Beth is the house. So you're so, housed. You're, you're, so the alphabet is training you to be housed like a bull. Look at the word house. You see the last three letters is used. And the first two letters is whole. Whole means to work and use means to be used. So when, they, when you're calling your house your house, a house was designed for you to be used to work in. The alphabet puts you in the alpha state, dreamlike state, then puts you into beta state. So alpha means dream, beta means to perform an instruction, alphabet, break your spirit. But once again, you said it was the, f the first three of the is economic, economics, e education, education entertainment. entertainment. So in regards to even what, what you're saying about the bull is quite interesting because Os Os Osar, Os a symbol of Osar was actually was also the black bull. And who was for f uh, Osa for those who's not um, Osa, familiar with Osa ancient, from ancient Kemet ancient, culture? Um, the Kemet culture was as in in the Ifa you have um, Obatala, which is the king of kings. So Osa was the king of kings, basically that mm -hmm. um, that universal principle of order that came down mm -hmm. to um, to bring down knowledge, wisdom, om mm -hmm. omniscience, all science, uh, all power, and all presence, mm -hmm. basically what in the Helios Biblos or the Holy Bible will call um, the Lord, basically. Mm -hmm. That's an incredible bull. <laughs> incredible bull. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, we have number four. We have labor. Yeah. So you know, once that they, they've got the land, they educate you. Um, uh, they put a spell on you You know We, we spoke about um, Grammar And grammatics And spellings And spells Then you have the entertainment When they enter Entertain your mind Now they put you to work And I just want to break, Once again Breaking down the spirit Using the, the, the study of grammar You know They've, they've studied your, your spirit They've broken down Because especially in slavery They break down Your That's resistance right. So once they've studied you And broke you down And make you a tame animal That's They right. can perform labour Because look at the word labour You see our lab Our laboratory right. So they've studied you Broken your spirit and now they've, they've put you into their labour force their labor. That's right, that's right So um, So after law, after labour we have law I want, Before you go on to law Also what they do, another trick is employment M Employ means a trick So they've tricked Meant means your mind That's right so They've tricked your mind to perform labour That's right, that's right And When And, 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 and then they call it a job What's the job? Break that one down. Well, um, I can't remember actually from one of my notes, but I do know it has something to do with uh, deception as well, deception right. and mm -hmm. and um, control as well. Right. But also, when you look at in in in, in the Hebrews Bibles, you look at a section of 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 Job mm -hmm. in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, so if you could so what happened with Job? He got. Um, you know, Satan went to um, so-called God. They played a little trick to say, "Okay, um, do you think I'll I'll be able to break this guy down and ha have him not worship you?" So, um, so the Most High God said, "Yes, I have this man called Job. Job you know, he's so faithful. Um, I don't think you'd be able to do that." So Satan went about trying to. Disprove God by creating all kinds of calamities. <laughs> you know, um, he went through stages basically to try and destroy and break him down. That's what that's what they do at work. Mm -hmm. The same thing they do they 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 break you down. Yeah, and once you've been employed, but once your mind's been tricked, you're put in a position where you'll call someone a boss. What's boss backwards? The person who can make you sob. That's it. In tears, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of people at work who um, who um, um, break down in tears because of stress. So, yeah. So um, we have law. 
the law um, once they established the law now this becomes the rule as you said right mm -hmm. and um, we're not talking about Ma'at here we're talking about more like um, legalities so they use law to mask their legalities or legal ties um, then we have politics or politics um, which is you know the way um, people relate to each other yeah mm -hmm. um Say it again, sorry. So you have politics. So that so you start again. So after the, law you have you have um um politics. So so it's it's uh, the first one again is So we have economics. Ex so these are, these are powers of control if you just join powers, powers, powers of control. So you have nine powers of control. Nine so powers we spoke of control. about economics, education, entertainment, mm -hmm. labour, went on to law. Mm -hmm. And now it's oh, politics. To law, yeah, law. law okay. Yeah, and now it's um, politics. Right. Okay. Uh, Fee, are you going to come in or uh, at some point? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. So after yeah, that, so. we have religion. I just want to. So you've got law, law, and politics. So just basically, law. When you uh, law is just a code. Code means when you go. Code means code. When you co collaborate, That's D right. means to take down. When you collaborate to take down something and you do it in secret, it's called a code. A code is a law because a, a law is a code of words. Basically, Basically, if you look at the word, then you, you take what you need to take, then you put a wall up to stop the other person you've taken it from taking it back. If you look at the word law backwards, you see the word wall. Right. So that's what law is done. Exactly. Yeah. And then when you look at the way in the Western world, how they create um, um, codes, they create certain type of behaviors that they patent mm -hmm. and that they now own. And now they put a contract out and anybody who breaks that contract then is deemed to break the law mm -hmm. which basically they're breaking codes yeah. and that's the way that basically the system is able to make money out of people basically by creating these penal codes that they know that people will automatically break because a lot of these laws so-called laws actually come from a very humane um, sense and mindset basically mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying so they know already that people will automatically break them so they're setting people up to fail Mm -hmm. And the key element of law is deception as well, because right. they fool you into thinking that they're super, superior to you, you know, by creating a false uh, genealogy, a false sense of being royal over royal. you. Exactly. You know, but everything relates to Africa. So the first, every, everything that they used to be royal comes from Africa, the symbol of the lion, the jewellery, the crowns, you know, so it's a false sense to be fooled by a ruler. That's right. That makes you fall into the alignment of the laws that they set. That's it. So yeah. So, so then after then we spoke about well, then uh, politics, politics, the way that people relate with each other. But obviously, when they set these laws, and now they're going to put those so-called laws and codes into people's lives, and also um, create systems of trickery. And and that's what they do because look at the word politics. You see the first three letters of the word politics is a poll. So basically they get information. That's what same thing what the police do. Look at the first three letters of the word police, you see the word poll. So they create information, then they lie and trick you, poll lie trick. That's right. Then we have religion, which now tapping into you know uh it, which actually goes re religion um, relates to tying you as well, basically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So religion re legare to tie you back. Mm -hmm. So they're tying you back to all those previous principles in order for them to dominate you. And it, it also relates to uh, the ligures, which which were the, the Africans that first the Africans that were settled in in Italy. Right. They were the slave. They, they, sorry, they were shipbuilders. Right. And then basically they were the first ones that were put in enslavement. Right. So the religious, the, the, the Africans that were tied back tied into bondage. Tied back into yeah. bondage. Yeah. Right. Right. Heavy. 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 Then the, you have sorry the Neolithic period. Right. That was right. Then you have because obviously with religion that they're, they're also in 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 most aspects tapping into the soul as well, uh, tapping into your rituals because you have you know um, so that they they're, they're not just tapping into the superficial aspect of it but also tapping into your god co your god concept as well and that is the, the spirit as well calling down the sp it's tapping into your spirit which is we'll go back to grammar That's grammar right. is the art of letters letters Gra in french it's grammore the art oh, yeah. of uh, calling down a spirit That's right. so basically 
and the, the book the, the biggest book on this is held in the Vatican right. so basically this is the practice that they're using to control you it's a practice to, of control, control to hold you back that's right that's right and to sp- which they use spells mm-hmm. which they cast yeah. And then you have sex again one of the most sex. powerful forces sex. Sex. sex 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 so one of the most powerful f- forces basically mm-hmm. um sex hex hex sex so do you know why sex is called sex because in the position of sex you assume the position of the number six, number six. So sex six relates to the six. sex is in in a in a roman Six is the letter sex. Sex, sex. So okay. when you perform in sex, you pr- you go into position of six, six, which is the word sex. Sex, right, right, right. Okay, um, which then in controlling sex is not just the, the act of it, and not just the act of the reproduction act of it as well, but it's also what follows after that as well. So, how do you mean control? How do you control sex? Because basically they... I can hear Fio coughing like he wants to come in on this one. <laughs> okay, Fio. Okay, Fio. Okay, right. Um, when it comes to... See, what... what, what I just want to recap and go through. Yes, Because it's like we've gone, we've gone through like um, the majority of these um, um, areas and who was the first posited by the... By the by, the guy. What's his name? Nearly Fuller Junior. So yes, this, yes. this nearly Fuller Junior. Nearly Fuller Junior is the author. Is the author of what is called the United Compensatory System. Was it System Code Book Concept. Workbook Concept? That's the one I'm forgetting. He, there's 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 actually a video where he breaks down. Why he's, yeah. why he's included every single one of those words in the title. You see, because um, so these are the. Yeah, the systems of power. He also calls the the, the nine areas of people activity. So nothing. sorry, just just to, who? What is his credentials? Who is this guy? What is his credentials? Yeah, how did he just pop up with all of this? Um, is <laughs> this this is this is the guy who um who um I believe he was I believe he began his observations as a as a naval officer. Yeah, right. So he Interesting. Was, he Interesting. was he, which gave him the opportunity to um. To travel, mm-hmm. you know, to many, yeah, yes, to, exactly, to many locations around the um, mm-hmm. uh, earth, and where he, you know, um, pretty much likened to the Honorable Marcus Mosiah Garvey, was able to observe mm-hmm. the state of wherever, air quotes, mm-hmm. black people were, and obviously the correlating conditions was was pretty much consistent. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then obviously his observations went to a much deeper level in which he began to identify that there was a certain, like you just said earlier on, a uh, codified manner in which people mm-hmm. behave, a codified manner in which people interact. I just want to stop you there. Go you on. said an important word. Uh, Theo said observe. What does observe mean? Ob means against serving. So basically, on this level of the planet, they observe everything that means they're against serving anybody and this is how they construct every action that they perform sorry for you absolutely so um so from there i mean i don't recall in precise detail how he went about devising and and no, this is a brief you, yeah, you can go and then this is yeah, the, the end result was this i mean i actually first came he first came to my attention um Quite some years ago, when I was actually flicking through um, Dr. Francis Quest Welsing's ISIS papers, and when there's a there's a that there's a very heavily references Dr. Neely Fuller Jr. and his work, so um, that's where this where this um, areas of people activity originates from. So, getting back to what I was going to say, when we came to the whole idea of sexy, when we go through the when we go through the whole all of these areas. <coughs> Um, it's useful to for us to bear in mind that, and for those who are listening, that all of these, all of the activities within these arenas, are kind of like they reinforce, and a, a, a kind of a kind of totality of 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 its of um, behavior. So the whole thing is the whole thing is actually, um, like I said, codified. 
you see. So by the time you get to, I mean, there's a, a breakdown of of the that sex, the category according to yeah, the, that's the what one, they call. The viewers seem to be uh, interested in this sex control. What is this one about? Well, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna go through, and I've got a little what they call compensatory logic. And that's and it starts off by saying, well, that's any any. So, what's compensatory mean? Compensatory. Well, when I mean, you think that's that relates to compensation. That's okay. A way of, okay. Like, okay. Cool. 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 Yeah. <laughs> right. Cool. So that's a way of you know that's a way of kind of like restoring loss. You see. So, um, in that sense, it starts off with that logic saying, "Is any interaction?" So, Shen just said, "Restoring balance." Thanks. Thank you, Shen. Thank you very much, Shen. <laughs> Absolutely. And um, <laughs> any interaction, any interaction between male or female. Yes. You see, and um, so that that includes one or more varieties of sexual intercourse or sexual play. Um, also, so suggesting that you know the intention of being helpful or producing constructive results pertaining in their sexual arrangements during during the existence of see now it reads out here white supremacy and obviously I'm I'm someone who doesn't really get down with that whole idea but um so when we look at when we look at we're looking at a system of dominance rather than one of supremacy so Mm -hmm. we tend to I tend to look at things as saying, you know, it's a it's a global dominant system. So um What's interesting about um, sex is the way that it's been used. But see, by the time you get to by the time you get to this idea about what we're dealing with in terms of the sexual arena, I mean, without referring to the book, I know that Neely Fuller once said this is the single most destructive area, really, when it comes down to all of them. You see, because you are going to to advance the program, yeah, of of global white domination sleeping with them is the single worst thing you can do uh, can you break can you go into that more deep well I mean I would say without even without making any further references to the whole to the whole to the whole theoretical idea because you see um, the current the current the current cultural profile of the world, right, is very much founded upon what we call anti-blackness. So you're advancing that idea just by the very interaction that way, because whoever you, whoever you are <coughs> engaging with in that manner, is a reflection of your ideas. It's a reflection of the kind of archetypes you subscribe to. It's going to be a reflection of how you've been educated to a certain extent you see it's a it's, it's it's a it's a reflection of it's it's a reflection of all of those things and how how consistent you are within the other um the other the other fundamental laid down in terms of the law in terms of the religion in terms of everything else so it's a reflection of all of that, and then that is also going to have a an effect on how you how you relate to self and kind. It's going to shape your very politics, as it were, and then you will proceed from there on. Could you repeat what you? I've oh, just got a call coming through. Actually, um, let's see what the caller's got to say in relation to this. Hello, caller. Good evening, gentlemen. Oh, Edison. good evening, Edison. <laughs> how you doing? Good to have you on board, Edison. How you, good, how you e- good evening, brother. Uh, yeah. b- good evening. <laughs> oh, God. I've been listening. It's been very good for the last hour or so, trying to grasp where everything is. Is the gentleman's name, is it Shem? That's correct. Yes. 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 Yeah, no, that was a, a, a positive breakdown of the principles. I'm not sure you've got to nine yet. Virtually on the way there. Yeah. Um, I was listening. I was trying to work out the order and whether I would have put it in that sequence, mm-hmm. only because um, at the very top, the concept of economics is not based on what has been stolen. What's it's what has been educated 
as a fair playground. That's why I would have put possibly education first, because everything that's kind of basically been described is a platform that someone else has created and people are not using their own judgment they're using that platform to try and work out the equation i think that's what shane was just about to say that uh, the game from a filthy idea will still be filthy there's no way right. you can come to a good conclusion using their poisonous dynamic to break it down that's right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so i'm trying to work out the concept of if you started on the fair playing field that what someone has done is stolen the concept of power. That's right. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not a boy and a child. It's a thief and a victim. That's right. And someone has essentially created a whole educational dynamic to give them the true rights of something which was effectively stolen. That's right. And uh, I'd just like to yeah, say... So Okay. Sorry, I just uh, in relation to the sex part of it, uh, basically, yeah, th th yeah, I've got a Wait, problem. I've got. Pro I just say nature runs its course. Who sleeps with who? But basically, it's their concept of sex because basically our concept is a man and a woman creates a god. Yeah, it creates life. You know, their aspect what? is abusing and killing and and beating the woman down into a second class citizen or property. You see, and it is in the name, as they say, female and woman. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> so the fact that both ends are thinking to the ownership towards the male, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but the way it's used in society is much more insidious. Mm -hmm. The fact is that they know how people make decisions sexually first. That's right. In a given situation, a guy is more likely to sexually profile a woman than mentally profile a woman. Mm -hmm. And the woman will balance the financial profiling with the sexual profiling, but essentially the sexual aspect, which doesn't deserve the right to be in the equation because it doesn't provide anything much outside the pleasure from the actual moment. You can have sex all day with someone, but that's not going to improve your position or situation in life. It's just going to improve enjoyment in that moment. It, um, I like it. Go ahead. Yeah, um, can I just add that the only way that it becomes productive and constructive is when it's tied with purpose. If it's purposeless, if it's just an act of, as you mentioned, an act of, of, of immediate gratification and thrill, yep. it doesn't really produce anything other than that. So mm -hmm. if it's something that's linked with um, balancing and healing, because we can look at it from a, even from not just a physical aspect, also from a spiritual aspect as well. You know what I'm saying, yeah. So, oh, wow. but also on a physical aspect, it's it's it has to come hand in hand with: Are we performing the act of sexual union to create justice, or are we perpetuating the injustice? <laughs> well, the thing is, um, injustice is usually something, unfortunately. Um, equ you know, equated between the two individuals having sex. So, as far as a global situation or something like that, sex can't save the world. No. So there's no injustice that we could take to anyone and say, you're doing this, this, that, precluding us from sex. If they did, we did that, they'll be giggling their heads off. Only because, like you said at the beginning, their power is in the convincing us that they own the land. Someone who owns land and property does so because they have the actual armies to protect what they're saying. They've come together with a single idea to say that the queen has the biggest army on the country, in the country, hence she owns the land on that basis. If someone brought another army that was equally as big, they could oust the queen and say that they're the king or queen. Because if you look in history, that's all that's taken place. Someone that comes with a bigger army, asks whoever's there, and then therefore says they control the land and educates everyone and generations to believe that. Sex on a spiritual level, again, we kind of confuse the, the excitement of it and the enjoyment of it and really don't appreciate what has been exchanged spiritually. Because the energy that is transferred between two people that are not well, because they're caught up in some mindset of, course. of inferiority. Of course. It's going to create more inferiority of course. and more of course. problems down the road. Of course. Uh, so Edison, we're in a situation that... 
can you go into the spiritual aspect? What is the spiritual aspect of sex? Well, man, that's a bit frightening, and I don't want to shake no one. But the spiritual aspect of it... No, go and frighten some people. Go on, it's all right. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay. The spiritual aspect really doesn't appreciate the true exchange that is taking place. People get caught up and say, I think that person, I'm going to feel well or excited engaging with that person, not realizing that um, if you imagine a child is created with all the attributes of the parent yeah. that are there, yeah. the good and the bad. That's right. So therefore, in that exchange is that we say all of me into all of you. That's right. So if that person is in a bad state, yeah, mentally, physically, um, spiritually, unwell, angry, what have you, they literally transferred all that energy into the other person they just engaged with. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And vice versa, when a man is there going into, you know, with a woman, a woman's energy, she's a bad luck lady or she's got troubles or what have you. This man has now brought all that energy onto himself. These things, so can't wash. So can't clear the energy frequency you just now attached to yourself that you're trying to now get rid of and you don't know how. Your life is now changed up just by encountering and sleeping with the wrong person in the wrong state because your eyes were excited and you thinking in your mind. So, so what about if it's the right person? Well, again, based on what qualification? So Edison, can you can you call us back because uh, we have a, we've got a slight technical fault with the phone, yeah? Okay. So just call us straight call us straight back now, yeah? Okay, no call us straight back now, thanks. Right. Yeah, it's a bit of a strange one that was as soon as he talked about the spirits. Uh... <laughs> so Edison, call us back here. Yeah? If anybody else wants to contribute to this, I'll be talking about the nine elements of control. Uh, oh. Hello? Is that better? Yes, better, yes, thanks. Excellent. No, the funny thing is, no one ever married the wrong person. Hello? Yeah? yeah. Is it gone? Yeah. Yes, yeah, okay now. Yes, yeah, okay now. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say, no one deliberately ever married the wrong person. They always hope that they'll be the right person based on their estimation of what is right and what is wrong. But obviously, divorce and all these people breaking up happens because the initial fantasy that they took into the relationship doesn't... Oh. Are we good? Yes, okay, now, yeah. All right, the initial fantasy you took into the relationship of how this person was going to heal your mental wounds or distract you from previous relationships lasts as long as the other person is able to maintain it. As long as they can appear the right person or cover you for the six months or years that you're there, essentially, like all good things, uh, things change. And can you actually use that person to help you forget all the things you've been before? There's a much deeper psychological principle going down um, that people don't actually really engage in when they initially meet someone. You know, they say, see me and live with me, two different things. But the guy is basing what he wants on what he sees, vice versa, the woman that on the man. So we're in a situation where we're not in the best places mentally because we're trying to emulate something which we can never actually achieve parity and we can never be equal in this environment because it's not designed for us to be that way. So, we uh, really do have to separate and create our own environment where we can actually be ourselves and live as we actually naturally occur. Well. Yeah, you, you want to ask a question, yeah? Yeah, no, so yeah, yeah. I was going to say yeah. in regards to uh, the religion and all that kind of thing. Yeah, I was going to ask you a question. I want to ask a question, sorry about that. Sorry, sorry. Um, so in, the, in regarding to sex then, um, at mm. what point do you think um, sexual activity should take place? It should take place where you're actually like the old days, do the whole, I know no one's got the patience, but do the six months, do the courting, actually know who it is that you're sleeping with, because you're not sleeping with an idea, you're sleeping with a whole being, with a whole story and a whole um, legacy and lifetime behind it. You're actually merging all of that together. 
So, so that's not a decision that you make. You, sure. You take longer to buy. You think more about buying a house or a car than the person you sleep with. Yeah. There are people still who hold on, who hold off sex after six months and still the relationship really, um, um, you know, um, falls apart. Because we're really not qualified to make the decision as we would like. We're really in Russian roulette. So... Uh, a relation roulette dynamic. I only gave a time frame yeah. because a question, a time frame question was asked. Sure, sure, sure. Otherwise, there'd be no way you'd have to engage that. And I really wouldn't want it to say anyone, hold off, do this, do that. Look, we all live and take risks on our own account. So each person has to man up or woman up and say, am I making this decision? And I take the full responsibility for the repercussions what come and as, as well as I'm looking as well as the good that I'm looking from the situation uh, I can also ask sure. a question in regarding to unresolved issues and that's caused trauma that's caused repressed anger um, mm. where does um, the revenge fantasy come in then uh, the revenge comes where there's um, you've seen it many times where a guy would get involved with a woman and you know how it is right um, women men women feel and then they think yeah they will do something I want to do that the next thing they feel oh, maybe I shouldn't have done that but guys are the guys that think and then they feel so what happens is the woman gets them and she's all excited and the guy gets involved and then the woman turns cold on the guy and this time the guy's in love. Right. And he wants to be with this woman and everything. And she's like, yeah, I made a mistake. Not sure I want to get involved. With it. And the guy's confused. He said, at the beginning, you was all over me. That's right. Now you don't want to know me? What's going on? And the guy's now walking around. And again, a situation is that this guy, oh no, he reminds me of the ex. He reminds me of this. And the guy's walking along, forlorn, doesn't know what to do with himself. And she, he is now begging her to be um, in a situation with her. And she's like, well, okay, I don't know. And dismissive of the whole dynamic. So again, she can try her best to try and get back the person who initially did what they did by then dealing with all the guys that come into her circumstances in a certain way. Right. So, um, I'm gonna, uh, am I out? Yeah, go. Yeah, so. Oh, I'm, sure. I'm on that. <laughs> right, I'm here. You're really getting grilled here, Edison. See y'all again. I don't mind. It's another day. Because I, I'll go and teach a class on this in two weeks' time, and it's going to be a crazier than this. So what? On. What? <laughs> uh, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw, I'm gonna throw a little um, controversy in here now because okay. another, another um, area of these mm. activities, which also has a close relationship with trauma, is okay. religion. Is what? Sorry? Religion. Religion, yes, in yeah, that, religion, in that it often offers a safe harbor for those who have gone through um, a lot of trauma in their lives, you see, and, and they find themselves in... Um, in like religion. The, yes, yes. Oh. But then also, alongside that, there's also, um, there's also the, um, the aspect of it in that, despite um, certain individuals being very um, regular in the, like, the church environment, they also... Mm. It doesn't do anything to actually um, um, prevent them from still behaving in a promiscuous way. So many times, there's, there's there there be a lot of people who are, they actually attend the church and you think they'd be they'd be rather pious and um, you know kind of reserved in that activity, and yet it doesn't actually do anything to to actually stem off that type of behaviour. It still continues despite the um, the religious activity. So is is that kind of like related to the same thing? Well, in the sense that, how do you say, it's the old saying, uh, taking a knife to a gunfight. Yeah? Yep. A knife can't really do anything. Religion really can't do anything to help in those situations because uh, it's not providing a solution. All it's giving you is a belief into something that they hope that you then pray hard enough or think hard enough to distract you mentally within your mind. They really doesn't. It's very ill-equipped to actually help people in that situation. 
all religion can do is give you another idea to focus on, which really doesn't help. As soon as the religion lets you down, all these other people come around. You see, that's why you see people throw themselves into the religion. Every service, everything they're in there, hoping that they can forget the trauma that they've been in. Yet I'm the, um, saying, the... Yeah, Jesus could have saved me. But the truth of the matter is, this is a much deeper science. And the actual energies that are actually conversing with the people, that are creating that sense of fear, uh, desperate, not desperation, fear, um, needs to form a fear or anger. Because that anger is something that, again, these energies provide in order to protect the person. Mm. So there could be a scenario where they're angry with you because you're a nice guy, but they could be a, a, a nasty guy and they love that guy. And you're like, hold on, what's going on? Why is it that they like all the bad guys and not the uh, uh, nice guys? Mm. And what you don't appreciate is that the entity that's working within them wants low frequency characters, low frequency guys, so it can reenact the actual event that took place. Wow. But it can keep that woman at a low frequency of energy because she's using low frequency guys that are easily manipulated by these entities. That's right. And a tired spirited guy, so the energy is going to throw off. So the woman, and based on events that took place in that trauma, she's going to try and recreate them. It's crazy. And the guy that looks like he's most likely to recreate it is the one that she's going to be more drawn to. Not the nice guy who wants a savior. Yeah. She doesn't want a savior. Those entities do not want a savior to help her out of that. <laughs> she doesn't know the difference between herself and the energy anymore. Over a time, she can't work out who's who. And then, if you look at the etymology of the word nice, mm. <laughs> mm. means foolish. Again, that's it. And it's not that the guy is foolish, you know, because the problem is, the hardest part of it is that the, um, the woman is sending herself down a road of destruction. And it's only as she's attractive that people still care. Mm. You know how it is? If someone's not attractive, they're mad. If they're attractive, they're eccentric. It's as long as the woman remains attractive. That's why you have scenarios where some people are holding on to their looks for as long as they can. I know a lot of women that have been abused that essentially they will do anything to maintain their looks. Because only in their beauty sometimes do they feel they can hold power still. Because once that's gone, then all they have is the memories of all the things that took place. And that's a living nightmare someone's living whilst they're awake. Those thoughts are constantly peppering them and in their minds causing all kinds of distress. Edison, that's why she can be angry and everything. Go ahead. Edison, yeah, I want to book you to do a sex course, yeah? We're going to clean no, up, okay, yeah? I'm not doing no sex course. <laughs> no, we're going to, I'm going to, I'm going to book you. We're at pizza. I go one club. No, it's not a one, not a one class. We're gonna do a whole. We're gonna do a whole, whole course, mate. You know what I mean? No, mate. The thing is, at the end of it, you're gonna, um, yeah, you'd be better off in one sense than another sense. This world has gone mad, mm. and we're really in a sense where we don't really understand the energies taking place within people, how they're controlling them, and we. There's a saying that I said that black people created the world, but the Europeans created the matrix. They created the illusion. That's right. Uh -huh. So we're in a scenario that they didn't create anything. We could find everywhere you dig, you'll find a black bone. And you realize that they created a perception that black isn't in control of anything. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And we've actually bought this. This is why the education system is really the indoctrination system, edutainment system, because what they're doing is uploading programs up into your conscious mind so you see the world in your mind through their eyes and their concepts yep. so you're not actually ever looking at the world you're looking at a dream world that they created mm -hmm. and you want to be the king in another man's story it's not going to happen no one makes you a hero in their story we can march talk walk all day and all we're going to end up is still going to them and say have we done enough now? They say, of course not. I'm not going to ever let you take my position. The fact that you ask me is showing that you're weak. The fact that you, if you have to ask a person for something, means that they have something you don't. And if you look, they, we own all the land we have. 
nine times what they have as far as population is concerned. Mm. But how do they control it? They control it by creating the illusion that they control it and we buy in because we weren't allowed any alternative way of thinking. So, so, so Edison, Edison, uh, after, after depressing everybody listening in, <laughs> what's, the, what's the way out of this? Let me give the good, the good is, I only say is they say, if you don't know where to let go, you're going to carry on going mad, you know? Uh-huh. That within you is a more powerful intelligence and understanding of yourself. The mere fact that you challenge it and you're curious means that within you there's a greater intelligence. And remember, no one lives off something which is weaker than themselves. The fact that they're living off you is a reflection that you're stronger than them, more powerful than them. And they can't control you. They, they have to do everything to control you because if you did things for yourself, they can't compete. They really can't compete on any other level. That's why it's so violent, it's so what have you. If you actually connected to the, the ancestral power or spiritual power that you have, you can create anything, do anything, and you really want to get to the point that a man coming to fight you hasn't got the mental strength because you can control his mind. That's the level that we're really at. But we have our own mind controlled, so we're not actually dealing with our true power. Uh, so Edison, we're trying to get to the what? Yeah, where, so to go on your courses, where's when do you? I know you're running a Sunday course. So if anybody, no. I think we've got people who already. I think half the people in this room want to come on it. So when's <laughs> when's your course? Uh, when you're running the Sunday no. courses? Well, we're really at this moment halfway through a course, right? On uh, spiritual. Um, how to develop spiritual practices right. uh, down in central London, being gone, going through the centre of Pan-African thought. So if anybody um, wants got, to contact you to go on a course, uh, what, how can they do that? Well, um, at this moment, we've already got a Facebook page. We're having a web, pe- a web page being put up in the next couple of weeks uh, to go on with the talk that I'm doing, that you'll be there by my side. Uh, jealous when we're doing with... Um, Umar Johnson. Yeah, so can you tell us about the Umar Johnson one then? Yeah, we've got the Day of Empowerment. When is that? Uh, on when? the 7th of April in the Lighthouse in Camberwell. And who's going to be Lighthouse on the bill? Church. Who's it's on the bill? The Umar Johnson, and Muta Baruta, uh, Baruta, and Leo Mohammed is going to be the compere. And I'm going to be one of the speakers speaking about empowerment from an ancestral spiritual way. I'm not underestimating you, but how did you get on that bill? Uh, what they say, you know, sometimes um, no good deed goes unpunished. But sometimes, <laughs> you <get lucky. laughs> but sometimes you get lucky. And it was a, a talk that I did when I was a head speaker a couple of years ago. Um, and I think we're talking about spiritual cleansing with a woman that is actually, um, you know, putting on the event, witnessed me speaking or saw me speaking and said that she would um, put me on a bill. So, if, if, you know, again, the names are more known, but you know we're going to come with something, Gemma's, which is going to be slightly different. Heavy. Um, and in truth, when we talk about spirituality from its true essence, which is your your actual spirit in this reality, I'm not naming any gods or any names of anything. Because the one thing in all this religion is they forget you. You're the one thing they don't talk about. They talk about what you should do, how you should be, and give you a load of laws and morals. But they don't ask what you do and what you're capable of doing other than serving these ideas. We scrap all of that and say, give your power, what can you do? How can you talk to your own ancestors? How can you make sure that you're healthy? How can you make sure that you're spiritually adept to deal with what's coming on? And not from some praying to God to save you. How you know that each element and how everything comes into existence? A mechanic doesn't fix your part by looking at it. He knows how to put those parts together. You will learn how to put your part together so you can block certain events and situations taking place. And is this hard? It's very simple. You've been doing it all your life. Nothing new we're going to show you. It's just that you don't give your power away to every Tom, Dick or Harry. Cool. Yeah? Where can you get tickets from then? Where, where to, put, to get tickets for this event? I, I think um, 
And you've been actually advertising it on that radio station there and talking. Right. Uh, there's various numbers on the flyer that has been going around, but everyone can see it. So hand, I don't have it. I'm just turning up on the day. The promotion part is on my part. <laughs> well, well uh, I think the links will be on the Speakers Club the anyway. Good. What's you, that? Uh, you can hear a recording of this uh, interview on the Speakers Club channel on YouTube. Uh, we, we put up the links to get tickets for the event as well. So anybody listening in, if you want tickets, tune into the Speakers Club uh, channel on YouTube and you can get tickets to see them. Yeah, listen. So how are you, how are you shaping up? You, you're running, uh, running around 6 o'clock in the morning eating raw meat? And... No, my brother. I'm trying to stay healthy and clean. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's going to be a lot of energy on that day. Uh-huh. And um, I really want people to, for the first time, of course people think. But you know one of our favorite things? You don't actually ever think. You like to think so, but all you've ever done is ask the question within yourself and pray that someone gave you the answer. Mm-hmm. If you don't hear anything, you turn around to the person and say nothing. And we explain what that phenomenon is why you've always been in contact with your ancestors and with your spiritual self all your life. It's just, you know, no one ever told you that you were doing it. We just want everyone to realize that they are the power or have had it. We'll always, we'll not need anyone else or anything else. I know they say, let's all join together, but six people together is still going to create more sickness. Mm-hmm. You know, let's all get healthy mentally, spiritually, physically. And then when we start to come together, when we need to, it's with a very positive and powerful element. Well, Edison, and we become one strong voice, you know? I'd like to thank you for that. I'll just say, anybody, anybody got any more questions to ask, Edison? No, 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 I've been here, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, fantastic, Edison. We have to have you in the studio soon, you know? Yeah, we'll get down there, gentlemen. We'll get down there. Yeah. But thank you, everyone. That was a great show. I was there listening intently for an hour, and you guys got some bad etymology, well, serious etymology, breaking down a lot of stuff. Um, you know, that's not the kind of thing you hear everywhere. I'm proud to all of you for your studies. That thank you very much. To bring that stuff that's out. <laughs> It's not every day you hear them kind of conversations. That's right. <laughs> That's right. That's right. You know? <laughs> I just had to shut up and say, I know when to sit down. <laughs> yeah, Edison, I'll, I'll see you on Sunday then, man, anyway, yeah? I'll see you on Sunday, yeah. All right, yeah, keep, yeah, yeah. Respect, respect, All right, Edison. Edison yeah. Okay, bye-bye. All right. Thanks, no Edison, problem. yeah. Peace. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Yeah, that's a giant. Yeah, make sure you all roads lead down there on the 7th. Uh, see Edison, the great man himself. Edison's the great man. And uh, his warm up acts are going to be none other than uh, Umar Johnson and Mut- <laughs> Mutabaruka, hosted by Leo Chester. Thank you, Edison. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, respect to all the listeners. Yeah, it's been uh, yes. wow. Wow. Anything, anything else to say? He's really. Sh- yeah. yeah, yeah. It was deep. I mean, mm-hmm. he sp- spoke about the ancestors, and this is exactly what is the underpinning and um, the control. You know, the governing factors of our reality, basically. Yeah, I think what we we'll do, we'll have a short break, and then we're gonna then we're gonna we'll sum it up. Yeah. <laughs> Boom. Back in two, I think we're all recovering there from Edison's blast uh, earlier on there in the studio. There's nothing more to say, really. Uh, just hope you enjoyed yourself, Theo. Uh, we didn't finish, actually, the nine points of control, did we? Yeah, you want to just break down there? We've got about four, five, five minutes, minutes left, yeah. So, um, we reach on religion, right? No, we reach sex. Run, sex run, run through them again for who just joined us. So, we have um, economics. Yep. Education. Yep. Entertainment, mm-hmm. labor, law, politics, mm-hmm. religion, and then sex. Yeah, we got stuck on that sex. We got stuck on the sex thing. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, yeah. yeah. we received a, a deep schooling on that one. Yeah. Really. And then um, we've got war slash counter war. War, war slash. Yeah, what, 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 break down war. I, I mean. It's quite interesting how they have the sex with the war because if you look at most um, westernized European, um, the Caucasian or Indo-European as well, um, acts of war is is quite sexual as well. Mm. And a, another thing about war, which which we are mistaken, war means to conserve and protect, it means to hide. Means to hide. If you look at the word aware, aware, you, you know, so it, it means it means to hide, it means to keep. You know, if you look at the. the um, the Saxon, that's it, the Saxon, Anglo-Saxon word for war, mm. it means the security, to keep things safe. To so basically safe. They, they, they hold things back, you know. So that's, right. that's what war is, it's not attacking, it's, not attacking, it's, it's, it's holding keeping things in secret, yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
right, let's see if that, we've got a still technical problem, is it? Do you want to use, use, use this, uh, use this. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we said, you were saying war. Y yeah, war. Yeah. And uh, so war, keeping things in secret, yeah. And then what's the other, after war is... No, that, 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 um, that's, that's the nine. Oh, that's the nine. Yeah, that's oh, the I'll nine. run through them again one more time. So, the first one is economics, education, entertainment, labour, law, politics, religion, sex, war slash counter war. Theo? Yeah, just to, um, do, just to follow on from Shen there saying, you see, the, uh, one of the things that um, Edison elucidated on when he went into his broad broad spectrum analysis of the whole sex and trauma uh, dimension of all of this is that um, as well as it, as well as the war being sexual, yeah. the war actually encompasses every other area. That's right. This, it's all, um, it goes back to a few weeks ago when I spoke about things doing cultural work. So, but the war in itself, if you like, for example, well, it's, 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 we started off here some several weeks ago talking about psychology. The war takes place in that dimension. Yeah. And, the war also takes place in the cultural damage, and then the way that the, the the way in which it manifests itself is through these what we call these areas of activity, because everything is pretty much designed to reenact the same sequence over and over again in a way that reinforces what I might call the current power, power dynamic. So it's always. It's always fashioned to do that, you see. So, and, and as you know, um, Edison was quite helpful in looking, seeing, and pointing out the the signpost for where you can more or less redirect your energy and your attention and your focus to break out of those cycles. Because I mean, that the thing about the trauma and the bad boys and everything that was deep. You see, yes. that is a very um, it's an ongoing, and it's an, and it's actually been intergenerational. You see that aspect of it, as as many other of the of the um, challenges we face have been intergenerational. There's never been any kind of like escape from that. And yes, he's also saying you know you know we're we're living in a kind of make believe world of but it's not of our making. So then there has to be, and then once you realise obviously that they've, they've said that you know you've got the ability to create by far in excess of that. Yeah and move beyond those pretty much ideas but once they're being instilled at that level at the educational level they, well education I don't really like to get into that world much despite sure. whatever the meanings are about it we're talking about edification and learning mm. and education is more about training and it's more it's more individualistic in the way that it's put across right. and, and that also is not we didn't get through we didn't get to the kind of the the Asili concept of, uh, yeah. of Yoruba but that see that what, what is that what is could you break that down br briefly well that's that's in, uh, well so the Asili of course is what we're talking about we're talking about the very the very core and cultural seed you know that through which everything else generates about a culture you see you could call it um Rather than use concepts that may people be, might be unfamiliar with, there or it also has relation to something known as a cosmology in the context of its its a way of or or as you have have been working on some things recently when you talk about um, logos, ethos, and mythos. Mm -hmm. These things are at the root of. And if you want to talk about the European culture, then very much um, um, from. From out of the cultural seed, or the, the Asili, as Marie and Annie refers to, you know, emerges the logos of the culture, which is their essential logic. Mm. It's the, it's the, it's the way of thinking. Mm -hmm. You know, the big word she uses is the epistemology, which is the whole idea of them. Um, it's all the whole idea of what knowing is. Yeah. So it's a way of knowing, right. and it's a purpose in the way you think, and. That is fundamental, and it and it leads to a situation where this 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 power dynamic they, their their culture demands that that exists relative to what um, Edison was saying that you have to be kept in that dream world, you have to be disengaged from the core of who you are and what 
actual realities you can reenact, reenact, but you're actually all you're always in contact with and you just don't recognize it's there. You see, but that situation has to be maintained in order for you to kind of buy into the idea of white well, supremacy, as people say. The idea that there is, you know, there's nothing beyond that. You know, you cannot surpass that idea as long as you you you, you, you remain entrapped within these systems, these economic systems, these educational systems, these what your diet of entertainment and all of that is going to feed into, like I said before, how you relate to yourself and to your your kind. I feel I'm gonna have to start seeing boy. I don't know what this is done. It feels like woken up now. <laughs> you're gonna to have to say that for next week. So oh, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. So any final words, Chad? Yes, um, but just to say that you know all these systems of people activity. It's about really um, understanding them in context to um, our behaviours and in- interactions with each other as well and also with interaction with the seemingly dominating system and it also starts from admitting that you know um, there is some kind of defeat that has happened so that we can pick ourselves up and develop structures to counterattack it yeah, thank you for that, Shen Bar. It's been a mind blowing session. Now, you got anything else to final words, Phil? Um, <laughs> I think you've got a lot of final words just to say. <laughs> well, oh, no, nothing that. It's, it's been another great show. It's been wonderful. Always, every time here, it's always, always brilliant. I just have to do my customary shout out to Uptown Cuisine and West Green Road, where, well, I'm going to be heading there right now, actually. So, um, always, and that's where, that's where, of course, you know, Sound of Mind is coming there soon. And, uh, if, and um, just once again, I hope all the listeners, en- and listeners enjoyed the show and everything. And um, next week we'll have a bigger contribution from from Supreme, who um, t- t- finally graced us with his presence and is sitting there in the corner and, and, and refusing to even greet the listeners. I'm, I'm really disappointed. In you, brother. What's what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's saving himself for this show after the show. I think. Yeah, thank you for your shed. Yeah, it's been a mind blowing session uh, today once again. Uh, like to thank Edison for his contribution. Do remember Edison has his uh, African spirituality shows every Sunday. Uh, you can get info from the Speakers Club channel, also uh, Edison's channel. Uh, also, he's going to be doing, as I said, he's he's got a massive event on April the seventh. All roads lead to the Lighthouse, I believe it's. Um, you can also get info on the from the Speakers Club YouTube channel. But Edison will be on the bill with. Yuma Johnson, Muta Baruka and Leo Mohammed. That's a massive, uh, the biggest event of the year taking place, April the 7th. Make sure you've got your tickets. Also, I'd like to thank all the listeners, everybody, all the silent contributors, everybody. Also, Brother Dougie's event. We're going to be down there. Uh, Supreme's going to tell you more about uh, Brother Dougie's event. Uh, the, the, the hardest working soldier uh, in North London. Uh, his event's taking place on Saturday about romance uh, with TC Carrier. Uh, for the US of A so that's going to be another event uh, find your voice in Nubian House how to find a good black man and a good black woman and the magic of sex and that's taking place this Saturday the 10th of March uh, from 2 to 8pm venue Chestnut Community Centre 280 St Anne's Road London N15 5 BN. Also, I'd like to thank Mantis behind the scenes uh, for uh, uploading the videos on our YouTube channel, the Speakers Club channel. You can catch a recording of this event on the Speakers Club channel. Also, I'd like to thank everybody who's We've also got the Masters of Empowerment. That's the, the session, uh, Masters of Empowerment. Uh, do make sure you get your ticket once again uh, it's compared by Leo Mohammed uh, the warm up acts are going to be Muta Baruka <laughs> and Huma Johnson uh, the main event is Brother Edison of Angie, April the 7th <laughs> make sure you get your tickets from www.cyrustickets.com Cyrus is spelled S-I-R-I-U-S T-I-C-K E-T-S as in tickets once again www.cyrustickets.com and uh, like to thank everybody who's promoting, working hard, uplifting the community. I'd like to thank everybody also, Brother Minty, they're also Supreme, they're unconscious, Brother Dougie, Buzzing B, of course, SLR. I'd like to thank everybody for contributing to the Jam Master Show. Also, of course, Brother Lyndon Waters every time, and Sayom, not forgetting Sayom as well. Everybody who's contributed to this event, thank you, and it's goodbye for me. Stand by for Supreme on the after the show, after the show. Thank you.